Hey guys, what's going on? MJ Madness here, and it's that time of year again. NHL hockey returns this week, so I'm back with another season preview and predictions, giving you my complete season preview, breaking down every single team and every single division, including predictions for the regular season, all the way up to the Stanley Cup Finals. So without further ado, let's just jump right into things, starting off in the Western Conference and the Pacific Division. I'm going to start off with the worst team in this division. And so in eighth place, I'm going with the Seattle Kraken. I think the Kraken are just a classic expansion team. And maybe people got their hopes up with Vegas, but I think this is a squad that's going to take some time to build. I like how they've drafted. I think they have a few nice young pieces, but this is still a team that I think is a couple years away from being a couple years away. So let's wait and see with Seattle. I think there'll be still a few more years of them getting high draft picks. But just above Seattle in seventh place, the San Jose Sharks. I'm not really sure what to make of the Sharks because there are still some talented veterans on this team, but at what point do you just say, this is a team that is in the place it's in because they've had a few disappointing seasons in a row now, brought in a new general manager, but still, this is a tricky situation for the Sharks because they're locked into some bad contracts for aging veterans who don't have as much talent anymore. The Vlasic contract in particular definitely hurts. I also don't see much young talent in the system just yet, so I think the Sharks are in a bit of a tough spot as far as rebuilding goes, but maybe they'll head in the right direction if they have a bad year this year and get a high draft pick. We'll see how things go down in the Bay Area. But sticking within California for our sixth place team, the Anaheim Ducks, also rebuilding, but I think have a much stronger trajectory of rebuilding because the Ducks already are building some nice young talent. And so I think they are heading the right way. Still not close to being there yet, but I wouldn't be surprised in a few years to see them having more success in this Pacific division. But those three teams, San Jose, Seattle, Anaheim, I think are kind of a tier by themselves, the bottom three. Any of these top five, I could see having an outside chance at contending for a playoff spot. And so in fifth place, I have the Vancouver Canucks because the Canucks... They're also, I think, in a tough kind of mushy middle situation. I think it would be better long term for their for them to either go all in, which I don't think they have the pieces to do so. So instead, I think they should break it all down. Instead, it seems like they're kind of clinging to trying to contend maybe a little bit. So I could see them maybe putting together an outside playoff push. They do have strong goaltending, a few superstar talents, potentially if they can bounce back. So we'll see how it all plays out in Vancouver, but I see this team maybe sticking uh, close to a playoff spot, but kind of fading down the stretch. So that's why I have them in fifth. The team I have in fourth, also not super sure how to peg them. I'm going with the Los Angeles Kings, but even though I have them in fourth, I don't see them taking one of the West's two wildcard spots. I see them falling just short. The reason for that, I think, is this is a team that's rebuilding They were ahead of schedule, making the playoffs last year. I still think this is going to be a strong year from them, but I still am not completely convinced the rebuild is over just yet. So this is one I'm not sure about. I could totally see them sneaking into the playoffs, uh, especially with a division that seems weaker and wide open like the Pacific. I think this is probably the most open, or I guess that's a nice way to put it, least strong division in hockey. So the open opportunity is there for the Kings to, again, sneak into a playoff spot. But I don't know. I look at those teams in the Central Division. I think they're going to be taking the wild card spots in this conference. And so even though I see the vision in Los Angeles, I like the moves the team is making. I think they're going to be close to a playoff spot, but somebody's got to be on the outside looking in. And so the Kings are maybe who I'll say are ninth in the West and then fourth in this division, just kind of falling a little shy of a playoff spot. But with the Kings falling out of a playoff spot, even though they were in one last year, that means some new blood needs to come in to replace them. And so in third place, a team that missed the playoffs last season that I see making it back, I'm going with the Vegas Golden Knights. The Golden Knights, man oh man, what a disappointment last year. Um, But I think they have too much talent not to bounce back, at least a little bit. Still plenty of question marks about the moves they're making about what's happening in goal, about a whole lot more. But 
this team, they're not that far removed from being a serious contender, and the pieces are still there. They had terrible injury luck. I think maybe they're not going to be winning a Stanley Cup, but they are, I think, at least a comfortable playoff team. So I have the Vegas Golden Knights in the third spot in the West, or sorry, in the Pacific, excuse me, and making it back into the playoffs. In second, the team that had perhaps the most interesting and dramatic offseason I've seen in a while. It's the Calgary Flames. Man, oh man, what a offseason of highs and lows for Flames fans. It starts losing their two star 100 point players within a couple weeks of each other. First, Johnny Gaudreau signing with the Columbus Blue Jackets in free agency, and then Matthew Kachuk traded down to the Florida Panthers. I'm not going to lie, it looked very bleak for the Flames for a little while there. And how do you recover from losing two superstars like that? Well, general manager Brad Treliving made very clear with his subsequent moves that no, this team isn't going to roll over and start a rebuild. They're going to go all in with what they can do. And so in one of the best general manager performances I've seen in a while... Brad Treliving found a way to pivot, and I'm so impressed at how he did so because he got a haul in return for Kachuk, bringing in Jonathan Huberdeau, another 100-point scorer from the Florida Panthers, along with Mackenzie Weger, who I think is a bona fide top-pairing defenseman. And so after all of that, along with a signing in free agency of Nazem Kadri, who had a huge year last year, the Calgary Flames have completely remodeled their roster, but they still look like they could be back being a team that has a lot of success. And so I'm not sure how it's all going to pan out long term. There are a lot of older players on some longer contracts, but at least for right now, you have to respect the moves that went down in Calgary because this is a team that on paper looks very competitive. We'll have to see how everybody gels, but I mean, they have a great goaltender in Jacob Markstrom, Vesna finalist. If he can keep things together in the playoffs, they have maybe the strongest defense court in hockey in terms of just depth top to bottom without maybe that one superstar like a Kale McCarr in Colorado, but just overall a bunch of really, really solid players. And then now offensive talent still, even though it's not Kachuk and Gaudreau, now they have Huberto and Kadri and great depth, great supporting pieces around them. And so I think Calgary will be fun to watch and I have them in second place in this division. But the team I have in first place, it's the Battle of Alberta. And at least in the regular season, I see the Edmonton Oilers coming out on top with more points. Connor McDavid, Leon Dreisaitl, what else is there to be said about them that hasn't already been discussed? These two are mercurial talents. We're very lucky to watch them. Edmonton is lucky to have them. And now that they've brought in Jack Campbell in goal, this team could be interesting. I'm not sure if Campbell is the answer, but I think he could at least be a step up on their goaltending situations in years past. And I think the team is slowly stabilizing. They're getting better, building experience. And so I think that's enough for at least a very successful regular season in a Pacific division that like I mentioned, seems to be a little bit more wide open. And so I have the Oilers coming out in first place in the Pacific this season. But that's going to wrap up my discussion of the Pacific Division. Now pivoting over to the Central Division, the other Western Conference Division. Here at the bottom of the barrel, in eighth place in the Central, and I will say it now, in 32nd place in the entire league, or last, I'm going with the Arizona Coyotes. Boy, oh boy, what is going on in the desert? Please let me know. It's crazy. This team, they're playing now at a college hockey arena. They have absolutely zero NHL level talent on their roster. It's just, it's a bit of a disaster and I'm scared for the future of this team. But to their credit, what I do respect is that there is no shame in the rebuild. They are tearing things down. They are using their cap space. They are bringing in draft picks. They are without shame, committing to a full-blown tank job, which has continued, I think, for the past couple years and might continue a little bit more. And so this team's going to be dreadful. I don't think that's a hot take, but I do at least respect the commitment to tanking, especially with some very high-end prospects uh, highlighted by Connor Bedard coming up in this upcoming draft. So I have the Coyotes at 8th place in this division, 8th place in the league. Sorry, 
32nd place in the league. Uh, in 7th place in the Central, another team that seems to be in a bit of a tough spot, but I respect the commitment to the rebuild. That's the Chicago Blackhawks. Made some weird trades. Still kind of have Kane and Taves in that sort of limbo. Um, I'm not sure what to make of them, but I think they are at least tending towards a rebuild, which I respect. I think they need to commit to it fully, move on from those veteran pieces. The Seth Jones contract is going to haunt them a little bit, but they've got some new management in, and so I think this is going to be a pretty clear tanking season in Chicago, and I think that's the right move for them to make. Six on up are all teams that I see at least hoping to varying degrees of success to be competitive. Out of that pool of six, in sixth place, the least successful of the teams at least pretending to compete for a playoff spot, the Winnipeg Jets. There are a few Canadian teams in tough spots. I think the Jets are one of them because the Jets still have talent, but they are in that dreaded mushy middle. And I feel like I could make a whole video about it because I feel very strongly it is the worst place to be in sports. You aren't good enough to bottom, you aren't bad enough, should I say, to completely bottom out, rebuild, get those draft picks you need, get those high-end prospects. You are so, also aren't good enough to seriously contend. And so you're a bubble team on the outside looking in. If you make the playoffs, not really making any noise. And it's purgatory. It's really, really a tough spot to be in. No team should try to stay there for long. I hope I'm wrong for Winnipeg's sake, but from the outside looking in, I'm worried this is going to be one of those teams stuck on that treadmill of mediocrity for a couple years, at least. And so, sorry to say it, Winnipeg, maybe you surprise. Not sure about your coaching moves, not sure about the offseason moves. I have them in sixth this season. In fifth place, this may sound like, oh, a low position, but... Remember, there are two wildcard spots in the West after the top three in each division. I have this team snagging a wildcard spot. It's the Nashville Predators. The Predators, maybe I would say a more successful version of the Jets. They are also, I think, a little bit in that middle ground. I don't think they seriously have what it takes to contend for a cup. But I think they're a playoff team. And maybe that's good enough. Uh, the biggest reason for that, I love UC Saros in net. There are a string of strong goalies in this category. Connor Hellebuck in Winnipeg, if he bounces back, he could drag them to a playoff spot. Uh, it's totally possible. But UC Saros is another just solid, solid goaltender. I love how he does it despite being smaller stature. Really just continuing that lineage of strong goaltending in Nashville. They also made a couple nice moves in the offseason. And so I like what they're doing in Nashville in terms of building a playoff team, not necessarily a contending team, but if you are satisfied with a first round playoff exit, which like I mentioned with my mushy middle tangent, you shouldn't be. But if you are, Nashville's designed a team that I think can do that. And so I have them coming in here in fifth. In fourth place, similar, similar boat, the Dallas Stars. The Stars are kind of fading out or phasing out the old guard with Tyler Sagan, Jamie Benn, Radulov led them to a Stanley Cup Finals, actually, just a few years ago. Um, now, I hate to say it, they seem sort of washed. But the reason I still have the Stars in a playoff spot is because they sneakily have put together a nice young core of prospects. That starts with Jason Robertson up front, Miro Heiskanen on the back end, Jake Ottinger really had a coming out party, uh in the playoffs last season in goal. And so I think those young pieces mean that if Dallas plays their cards right, they have the talent there to be a successful playoff team. And so I like those young pieces on Dallas. It's true they still have some old players on tough contracts who are a little bit over the hill, but those young pieces, like I mentioned, I like them a lot. I think that makes them a playoff team this year. But moving on up from Dallas, in third place, the St. Louis Blues. The Blues, man, I feel like I'm saying this a lot. Another team that I think could be stuck in that middle of the pack region. They've committed long-term to their core now with some contracts this offseason. Missed out on the Kachuk sweepstakes, which I think could have been big for them. But still, this is a good team. Strong pieces. I think they're a comfortable playoff team, and I don't have much more to say about them. In second place, 
the Minnesota Wild. The Wild are fun again. Who would have thought? And Kirill Kaprizov is a huge reason for that. I think the Wild are trying to push for more than just a playoff team. They're trying to push for, oh, we want to represent the West in the Stanley Cup Finals. Will they get there? I'm not sold, but I at least think they're a fun team that's going to maybe make some noise. And Kaprizov is a big part of that. So congratulations, Wild fans. You have an enjoyable team to watch. And I have them having a pretty good season and ending up in second in this division. But there is one team that I think is head and shoulders above everybody else in the Central, head and shoulders above everybody else in the West. And who else is that but the Colorado Avalanche? Because the Avalanche, what more can be said about them? They won the Stanley Cup, lost a couple pieces in the offseason, but still, I think, are just an absolute powerhouse with literally generational talents like Nathan McKinnon, like Kale McCarr, the coaching, the management, the depth around those pieces to just put together what could be a modern day dynasty. I'm not trying to get ahead of myself, but I think the Avalanche, they're not going to slow down. They won their cup. I don't see them having any hangover. I think they're going to have another very successful season here. I think that starts with a first place finish in the Central Division. But that's going to wrap up my discussion of the Western Conference now let's make a big jump over and look at the Eastern Conference, which I'll say right out the gate, on balance, looks to be a much stronger and much deeper conference than the West. There are a lot of very, very good teams here. And so breaking things down, let's look at some of those good teams in the Atlantic Division. But before we get to them, we got to start at the bottom. And so in eighth place, Je suis désolé. I am sorry. The Montreal Canadiens, I have you here. Man, oh man, how things have changed from their COVID Stanley Cup Finals appearance against the Tampa Bay Lightning. That was crazy. They went from that to very last in the entire league, or at least getting the first overall draft pick. Um, Montreal, I think there are maybe some tough years ahead. They still have some pieces, but they're getting older. The young talent isn't quite there yet, but I love Marty St. Louis as a coach. I think they are getting there, maybe, but it's still a long ways away. And so I don't know what to say about Montreal. Maybe I will say I'm mixed on the direction that they're going in, how the rebuild's going to work out. Uh, but I think one thing that is I'm more certain about, I think they're going to be a bad team. So I have them in eighth place. Moving on up, I have a series of teams that I think are not playoff teams, but that I really like the way they're trending. And that starts in seventh with the Detroit Red Wings because the Red Wings seem to have been rebuilding under Steve Eiserman for a while now. And I think they're still building that team, but it's slow, it's patient, but it's moving slowly but surely in that right direction. Getting those young pieces, finding a core that can win you games. I think this season, it's going to be a step up. They're not going to be a playoff team, they're not even going to be necessarily close to a playoff team, but I think we're going to continue to see that, oh, maybe the Red Wings will be running the Atlantic Division in just a few years. Who knows? Another team in sixth place, just ahead of them, that I also really see the vision of the rebuild. This is crazy to say it, but the Buffalo Sabres, Buffalo. Hello, I like what you're doing here. For maybe the first time in like 10 years, I finally like this new leadership group, I think. They have been so bad for so long that finally we're seeing them draft and develop promising young talent. Still, I think, a few years away. But I like what they're doing here in Buffalo. And so maybe there's a reason that the people of upstate New York can watch more than just football very, very soon, hopefully, if the Sabres can kind of turn that promise of young prospects into potential into success. So we'll see. But Buffalo, like Detroit, I think heading in the right direction. One more team that I have in fifth in the Atlantic that I think is heading in the right direction. Again, this is kind of shocking. The Ottawa Senators, another squad that has been not very good for a long time. But finally, Pierre Dorian, he had a hot Pierre summer, as they say online. Uh, really making some big moves, and I like it a lot. Still, I don't think they're a playoff team just because of how deep the Eastern Conference is, but I think Ottawa can give some teams some headaches this year, and 
maybe they'll be just on the outside looking in if things shake their way. Uh, I think heading in the right direction. I like what's going on here. Ottawa and Buffalo and Detroit as well. You three, I see you maybe running the Atlantic in five years. So who knows? We'll have to come back and, and check in then, see where things are going. But moving on up to the playoff teams. Yes, I said playoff teams because in fourth, I have this squad snagging a wild card. It's the Boston Bruins. The Bruins, I think, are on the way down. Uh, it's a changing of the guard that's going to happen sooner or later. I think at least for this season, though, the Bruins hold it off. It's an aging core, um, made some changes, I think will maybe fall off a cliff at some point, but until I see it to believe it, and there are a few more teams this will be true with that I'll get to soon, I'm not comfortable picking the Bruins to fall out of a playoff spot. And so I no longer think they're a cup contender. I think they're good enough to be a solid playoff team. This team just has so much veteran experience. Um, forget the age. This, this squad is, I think, it's deep, magnetic first line, and just players I can't count against until I actually physically see that drop off. And so until that happens... Boston, I still see you in a wild card spot as a playoff team, maybe just not as successful in years past. In third place, I said Calgary had the most interesting offseason. Their trading partners maybe had the second most interesting offseason. That's the Florida Panthers. I could do a whole video breaking down this Kachuk trade because it's very curious. The Panthers flamed out in the playoffs. And they rebuilt their roster. I'm not entirely sure, though, if it was for the better. So we'll have to see. I'm very curious. I love what Bill Zito does because for better or for worse, he's got guts. He makes moves. I respect it. And so I don't know if it's all going to come together like they think it will be. But I like that they are at least trying. And Kachuk, he's, he's a talented cat. Um, I think he's going to succeed there in South Florida. I think this is a playoff team. I think this is maybe not the President's Trophy winners they were last year, uh, but still a very, very good team that will keep trying to make some noise in the playoffs. Is this the year they do so? Spoiler alert for my later predictions. I'm not sold, but I think they at least will be another year of having a fun team to watch, which is great. So good for them. In second place, Battle of Florida. Three-time, back-to-back-to-back, Stanley Cup finalist, twice champions, the Tampa Bay Lightning. This team isn't going anywhere, folks. Um, it's another year, I think, of success in Tampa. It seems like they make small moves, but just find a way to keep running it back. I see no reason why this year will be different. Tampa Bay, I see them in second place. But again, they're looking beyond the regular season here, and so... There's not much more to say. This team is great, and they're going to continue to be great. In first place, though, another team that I think is looking beyond the regular season. There's always a lot to say about the beloved and also hated Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh boy, the Leafs, the Leafs, the Leafs. Another first-round playoff exit, another disappointment. It really feels like, at least for me personally... This is do or die time. This might be the last year for this core with Kyle Dubas to see if they can finally get over that hump, make it past the first round in the playoffs. I'm not sold on Matt Murray being the answer in goal to do that. Are you guys? Let me know because I'm not. I'm really just not. It seems like that's a pretty big bet. And I know, I know he's, he's had playoff success in the past, but that was a while ago. So... That's my doubt, but looking just strictly at regular season standings predictions, there's no reason to think the Leafs won't again have a very successful regular season. Austin Matthews, incredible talent. He's got some high-scoring running mates alongside him. The Leafs are going to make some noise. They're going to score points. They're going to put up big numbers and have at least a successful regular season. So that's why I have them in first place. Will they convert that to playoff success as well? We'll have to wait and see. But that wraps up the Atlantic Division, which means, last but not least, let's talk about the Metropolitan. Another fun, competitive division, mostly. Uh, but there are some teams 
or one team in particular, I think, at the bottom that's in a tougher spot. And so in eighth place, unfortunately for any Philadelphia fans, it's the Philadelphia Flyers. <sighs> what is Chuck Fletcher doing in the city of brotherly love? If someone knows the answer, let me know because it doesn't look pretty. The Flyers are just in such no man's land. Older players, big contracts, but not a very good team. No young talent, maybe not terrible enough to completely bottom out. Things don't look good in Philadelphia. I think there are going to be years of pain here, unfortunately. And I don't have belief or faith that Chuck Fletcher is the one who's going to steer them the right way. And so because of that, Flyers, I'm sorry, I have you in eighth place. I think you are among the worst situated teams in the NHL. At least some of the squads fully committed to rebuilding, like at the Coyotes, they embrace that. They have the cap space to get those draft picks to build up and get prospects. The Flyers are still stuck with an aging core on bad contracts that isn't near good enough to contend. That's why I think for my money, they may be the worst position team in the NHL. Um, I'm sorry, that's bleak, but I'm not feeling too optimistic. Uh, and I don't know what else I have to say here. In seventh place, the Columbus Blue Jackets. Johnny Gaudreau signs with the Blue Jackets. Is he enough to make them a playoff team? I don't think so. Now, Gaudreau, one of my favorite players to watch, and I'm going to miss him in Calgary, but I just he doesn't have a team around him in Columbus like he did with the Flames. And so because of that, I just don't think he single-handedly is the guy to carry his team to the playoffs. And there aren't many that can do so, especially in a deep Eastern Conference. I think Gaudreau makes them better. I like the signing. But you look at the roster around him. There's not much there. There really isn't. And so because of that, Jackets, I have you in seventh place uh, in the Metropolitan. In sixth place, this is a tricky team to peg. The New York Islanders, they have been so competitive for so many years. Last year, fall off a cliff. Is that an aberration or are they really just kind of done for under Lou Lamorello with the core that they have? For me personally, I think it's the beginning of the end for the Islanders, unfortunately. Now, I hate getting rid of Barry Trotz. I think that was a bad decision. And I think, now they could prove me completely wrong. That wouldn't surprise me. Maybe they make it back, but... I just don't see it. So I think the Islanders maybe are competitive. They have experience, of course, but I just don't see them being a playoff team. In fact, I see them heading in the wrong direction and not being super successful. And so that's who I have in sixth place uh, in the Metropolitan. In fifth place, the New Jersey Devils, perennial, quote unquote, offseason champions, making right moves, heading the right direction. Another strong offseason for them. But every year, it's like they want to make that jump to a playoff spot. And every year, they just don't do it. And I'm not sold that this is the year it's going to happen either. Um, I don't know what to say. New Jersey, you're heading the right way. I think I like the moves you're making. I hope you'll get there. I think you will eventually. Maybe you're closer. Maybe a couple years away. This season, I see them knocking on the door. That's why I have them in fifth. Uh, on the bubble, but end up on the outside looking in of a playoff spot. Uh, so that's my take on New Jersey. Moving up to the four top four playoff teams in fourth, snagging a wild card position, the Washington Capitals. This goes back to that trend I mentioned earlier with Boston, a team with an aging star, aging superstars, that sooner or later and potentially sooner will just have that drop off and fall off a cliff. But until that happens, until I see it with my own eyes, I'm not willing to predict it. It's kind of like I have to see it to believe it because these teams have been so solid and had such strong cores for so many years. And so with Washington, I mean, Ovechkin, I still absolutely love that man. I think maybe this is the year it, it finally falls off a cliff. But until that happens, like I said... I, I'm still I'm still betting on the grade eight and the caps to at least be a playoff team. Now I have them in the wild card spot. 
I think their cup contending Tays are long behind them, but they're at least, I think, a good enough playoff team. Uh, a similar spot, maybe slightly better situated, the Pittsburgh Penguins in third. Also have older star talent, Crosby, Malkin, Latang, that are sticking around, will eventually have to go through, I think, a painful rebuild when all those stars age out and stop performing at their best. Already are slowing down a little bit, but I don't think will slow down enough for them to fall out of a playoff spot just yet. The Penguins will remain competitive. Maybe not a cup contender, but that group of Washington, Pittsburgh, Boston, they're like the old guard in the East, maybe giving way to some younger teams on the rise in a couple seasons. The New Jerseys, the Buffaloes, the Ottawas, the Detroits of the world. But I don't think they're going to go gently into that good night, and I don't think they're ready to leave just yet. And so because of that, I still see those old stars hanging around for at least this season in playoff spots. Maybe not contenders, but good enough to be playoff teams. So Pittsburgh, you're who I have in third place. In second place in the Metropolitan Division, this team is interesting. The New York Rangers. Maybe a bit of a sneaky dark horse, I'm not going to lie. Um... Great goaltending, Igor Shosturkin is the truth. But beyond that, I like the moves that the Rangers are making, and I love the talent they have. Uh, really just on all aspects of hockey, forward, defense, goaltending, they have star-level talent, which is all that you need uh, to succeed. And so I think the Rangers, maybe the underlying numbers, the analytics don't always support it, but this is a good team. Just from the eye test, looking at the team on paper, this is a good team. They're going to have a successful season, I believe. And I have them in second place in this division. And maybe, if things break right, contending for a Stanley Cup as well. We'll have to see. But finally, in first place in the Metropolitan, the Carolina Hurricanes. I like what the Canes are doing. I think things are looking up in rally. I won't say too much just yet because I have to get to my playoff predictions, but the Canes made some savvy offseason moves to an already solid roster. They've had some playoff disappointments, but I think they're going to run it back with some improvements and maybe get over the hump. Whether or not that happens remains to be seen, but I believe at least they're going to be a good regular season reg- team. No, a darn good regular season team who I think is the best team in this division and who will end up in first place. And so that's going to do it for my regular season predictions. Every single conference, every single team, every single division. To recap, in the West, my playoff teams, I have the Dallas Stars and Nashville Predators as wild cards. The St. Louis Blues, Minnesota Wild, and Colorado Avalanche at the top three in the Central. And then joining those five in the playoffs out of the Pacific, I'm going with the Vegas Golden Knights, Calgary Flames, and Edmonton Oilers. Pivoting to the East, starting off in the Atlantic, I have the Bruins as a wild card in the four spot, and then the Florida Panthers, Tampa Bay Lightning, and Toronto Maple Leafs ending up in third, second, and first, respectively, out of that division. Finally, jumping on over to the Metropolitan, I have the Capitals as a fourth place wild card team, the Penguins in third, the Rangers in second, and the Hurricanes in first. So Caps, Pens, Rangers, Canes. Bruins, Panthers, Lightning, Leafs. That's my playoff field out of the East. 16 teams in total, I think. This would be a fun postseason to watch because there is a lot of talent and a few teams at the top who I think could be true contenders for a cup. Uh, Starting things out out West, though, I think the West is, on the whole, a weaker conference than the East. I think there are a few teams that could see themselves as contenders, Minnesota wants to be a contender. I don't think they're just there quite yet. Both of the Alberta teams, if things break right, I could see either of them making a run. Uh, But at the end of the day, there are a lot of teams who I think will make the playoffs but aren't contenders. Like, is anybody seriously believing in Dallas or Nashville to make a run to the cup finals? At least me personally, I don't see it. And so I see... The Alberta teams as outside Dark Horse Cup contenders, Flames and Oilers. Wild, maybe that would be crazy for that all to happen. But I think there's a clear favorite in the West. And it's still the Colorado Avalanche. 
I think this is still on paper uh, the cup favorite. And why shouldn't they be? Sure, they lost a couple pieces in net uh, and with Kadri up front. But the star talent remains. Uh, the core remains. The experience remains. The well-coached, well-managed roster. That's all still there. And so I think the Avalanche are going to really want to run it back. And I think they have a good case to doing so. So out of the West, I'm predicting that the Colorado Avalanche will be in the Stanley Cup Finals. But now let's jump over to the Eastern Conference, where I think things are a little bit, maybe a lot more complicated, because there are a lot of solid teams here. Now, I mentioned the three kind of old guard teams, the Bruins, the Penguins, and the Capitals, that I see uh, using their aging stars to secure a playoff spot. I don't see them as true contenders anymore, and maybe I'll be proven wrong. I think they're playoff teams. I don't think they're cup winners. But beyond those three, any of the top five, I could totally see making a run for the playoffs. So let's break it down a little bit. Uh, Who could make a cup run? The New York Rangers are a sneaky dark horse team. I mentioned it. I think we're overlooking them a little bit. I like the talent they have. I think if they can put things together, I wouldn't be surprised to see the Rangers break through and make a run. Uh, You can't, of course, overlook the two teams in Florida. Very, very talented. The Lightning have made three cup finals in a row. They could totally make a fourth. I think all of that hockey will catch up to them, uh, but they're going to want to prove me wrong, and I, I could totally see them doing that. Florida, again, I think... Maybe some puzzling offseason moves. I don't love them, but they're still a contender with the talent they have. Uh, so absolutely either of those Florida squads. Going up to Canada, we got to talk about the Toronto Maple Leafs just a little bit more. I said it earlier, this might be the last year for them to put it together, but I think they're close to a breakthrough. I think either... They fall in the first round again and completely blow things up, or this is the year that everything comes together. I don't think there's an in-between. So maybe that's not a prediction, but that's what I'm thinking. I think either it all comes together or it all falls apart. apart. We'll see. Um, Personally, maybe I'm just feeling pity for Leafs fans. I think they win. I think they get out of the first round. That's my that's my maybe not so bold or maybe bold prediction considering the history. I don't see them as a Stanley Cup finalist, but I'm predicting them to get out of the first round and not completely blow things up. Save Kyle Dubas's job. For everybody's sake in Toronto, uh, they better hope that comes true. But the last team I haven't mentioned, because as you can already maybe tell, they're my pick for the Cup finalist. I am going with the Carolina Hurricanes to represent the Eastern Conference in the Stanley Cup finals. Uh, so that means I am predicting that your 2022 Stanley Cup Finals will be between the Colorado Avalanche and the Carolina Hurricanes. And this would be a fun, fun series to watch because both these teams are supremely skilled, supremely talented. I think both just two examples of great roster building. uh, And it would really be awesome to see them go head-to-head on the biggest stage. It would be a battle, absolutely. Absolutely. And Colorado, I think, is certainly the favorite. But I just love what's going on in Carolina because I think it's been overlooked a little bit. But just look at some of the moves they made this offseason. Signing very solid veterans. Paul Stasny, Max Pacioretty, Brett Burns. Those are great examples of strong general management from Don Waddell. Constructing a roster that complements its younger talent with veterans who know how to win. That's, I think, the recipe for success. And so because of that, Colorado may be the favorite, but I'm rocking with Carolina. And so that means I am predicting that the Carolina Hurricanes will be your 2022-2023 NHL Stanley Cup champions. Yes, that's right. I'm going with the Carolina Hurricanes. I predict that the Canes will knock off the Avalanche to bring a Stanley Cup down to North Carolina, bring it back to Raleigh, uh, bring it back to the South, uh, I think everything's going to come together for them. I love the roster. I think they have good, good goaltending, a strong tandem there. Very, very deep defensive core. Just 
electric talent up front. And then, like I mentioned, amazing veteran offseason additions that I think is going to be the cherry on top to take this team to the next level. And so that's why Carolina is my cup pick. Uh, But that's, I think, a bold prediction. What isn't a bold prediction is that hockey is back, so get excited. I'm happy. I'm sure you're happy too. And if you want to stay informed and abreast with everything going on in the NHL world this season, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and give this video a like. But now that I've given you a super detailed and honestly a little tiring predictions, thank you for tuning in. Let me know your thoughts on my predictions. And also, please, in the comments, give me your Stanley Cup prediction. And maybe we'll come back in eight months or whatever and see how it all turned out. But... Other than that, thank you as always so much for watching. Thank you for your support and I will see you in the next video.